I decided to do a double upload on this one because there's something important that just come to my attention. For those of you who haven't watched it, I have a one hour video of me discussing about video game violence with my little brother. Go and check it out if you want to. That's my first upload. And here's the second upload. Let's talk about something else. This isn't really about video games or pop culture, but this is still about entertainment. Lots of people are really jumping the gun on this issue, and I really want to give my thoughts on this because I think there needs to be another perspective on this entire thing. So, Donald Trump tweeted, The theater must always be a safe and special space. The cast of Hamilton was very rude last night to our very good man, Mike Pence. Apologize. Wait. Did Donald Trump just advocate for safe spaces, as in that safe spaces? I mean, this isn't very likely for Donald Trump to be that way, but we're gonna slow down and figure out what makes him to tweet that thing out. So basically, he tweeted this because Mike Pence was going into a Hamilton play and the cast basically sent a message of some sort in the end. Here's the video. Vice President-elect Pence, we welcome you and we truly thank you for joining us here at Hamilton and American Musical. We really do. We, sir, we are the diverse America who are alarmed and anxious that your new administration will not protect us. Our planet, our children, our parents, or defend us and uphold our inalienable rights, sir. But we truly hope that this show has inspired you to uphold our American values and to work on behalf of all of us. All of us. At first, I was just like everybody else. Okay, Trump and Pence, you don't have to get so bart hurt over this. I mean, this is just the people in a place saying their message. There's nothing wrong with that. But then, I think about this for a moment, and I guess I kind of see why Donald Trump would react this way. Let me explain to you through examining the wordings of the people saying this, because that kind of examines some of their rather, uh, I don't know, just weird preconception. We, sir. We are the diverse America who are alarmed and anxious that your new administration will not protect us. These people are on the mindset that Trump's administration will not treat the diverse America to be good. These people are on the mindset that Trump's administration is racist to them. Thanks, mainstream media, for perpetuating this, screwing the heads of our generations, and fear-mongered them for this. I don't like either candidates that much, but I know very well that racist does not describe them. Man fear air is what I would describe as racist. And instead of getting some sort of warning or punishment, he's being proudly endorsed by the people at BioWare. Honestly, I really don't blame Trump getting butt hurt over this. They're literally on the preconceived notion that Trump and Pence are racist assholes that will not treat minorities well. That's like having a guy to come into your face and say, stop beating up women when you haven't beaten up anybody and you don't even hate women. But other than that, but we truly hope that this show has inspired you to uphold our American values and to work on behalf of all of us. All of us. The message itself is not a bad message. I mean, yeah, sure, you need to uphold American values equally to everybody in this diverse America, and I get that message. However, it is a completely innocuous and harmless message being sent on a rather offensive preconception. It's what Anita Sarkeesian loves to do, pretending that we're living in a white supremacist patriarchy and pretending that gamers are sexist to make her commentary on video games that are so detached out of this reality to be in some ways justified because she has that mindset in her head, the mindset that everything is sexist and racist, including video games. Everything is sexist, everything is racist, everything is homophobic, and you have to point it all out. Everything is sexist, everything's offensive to people like me. There's also another problem with that comment. Pence is there to just enjoy a play of Hamilton. He didn't want to go there to get people to shove their politics no matter how good or bad they are. So what Trump refers to as a safe space in there is not the kind of safe space that typical feminists advocate for, but just a personal space where we can just take a moment and relax from the harshness of the real world. That's a personal space that we human beings have and need. Pence wanted to take a break, just a little bit of solitude, and people confront his politics like 100% of the time. Of course, he's gonna get annoyed. Yes, he's about to be vice president, but they need their own personal space. Leave Donald Trump eating his sticks alone, mass media, for God's sake. 
It's like playing a video game, then having your mom to remind you that you have a homework to do, even though you did your homework and you already studied. You tend to get a little bit emotional when you say that, just because people are invading your own personal space. We just want to relax and take a break after you've done responsibilities. Give Mike Pence a break. I mean, isn't this the same thing that happens with comic book recently, where people are shoving their politics up to people's throats? You get pissed off on that, but not for Pence trying to take a break out of the real world just to enjoy a play? And by the way, as much as I really don't like seeing Pence Trump getting butthurt over this stupid thing, the Hamilton play is not entirely innocent in this entire debacle. There's a boycott going on for the play, which ugh, I really don't want to advocate for. I'd better be off just criticizing the show because there are tons of things to criticize. The casting of this Hamilton play is very ideologically motivated to the point of ruining history. Here's the thing. I don't mind having a diverse cast, go for it. However, what I do mind is the reason for having that diverse cast, which tends to be very political in nature. Here's an article from the Huffington Post saying that this isn't reverse sexism or racism. Okay, I'm all game. Please tell me why. What makes Hamilton work so well is the fact that it's a commentary of America's past through the prism of America's present, its future. It works because the historically white male founding fathers are being played by a predominantly non-white cast of blacks and Latinos. So you're saying that you want to represent the past through the lens of America's present. This... This is essentially a Assassin's Creed Syndicate. They're presenting the past times like its language through contemporary lens by having diverse characters that would be incredibly unusual for the time just for the sake of diversity and making sure that white people don't exist. It's nothing but an ideologically motivated historical revisionism and Huffington Post is trying so hard to justify their hatred to white people in general. Oh, and uh, it really didn't work well for Syndicate. The next paragraph is... Uh, even more baffling. Now, what would the musical look like if Alexander Hamilton wasn't played by Lin-Manuel Miranda and Aaron Burr wasn't played by Leslie Odom Jr., but instead the characters were played by two capable, talented white actors? Told you, they're historical revisionists. Ugh. Ugh. Just, never mind. The show would likely still be entertaining, but the context and the conversation would change. It's like suggesting that four colored girls or the color purple have an all-white cast. It's a completely different show. No! Hamilton is a play that was filled with predominantly American Caucasian cast, as you say previously. If your intentions are making it to be diverse because it was intended not to be, you kind of missed the part of its original intention. Yes, it would be a totally different show, as in, it would be not Hamilton. Do you have any books written by black people? This isn't a case of reverse racism. This isn't a case of people of color excluding white people despite bemoaning their own lack of inclusion in media. That's the whole point. Hamilton has created a space for Broadway for black and brown performers that otherwise wouldn't exist. Opening up roles designed specifically to be played by performers of color means enroaching on that space. Then why the hell should you invade Hamilton? Make any other show that uses black or female or Asian characters. You could have used this opportunity to introduce other stories from other cultures in the world, but you're here invading America's culture instead. You're a historical revisionist that wants to revise history through your own lens so that it doesn't trigger you that white people are involved in it. If that's not offensive, I don't know what isn't. Think of a big black man chasing you! <laughs> Well, he's not racist. And no, the campaign for a black Spider-Man or black James Bond cannot be equated to this. You can't scream double standard and suggest having a white Spider-Man is just as integral to his story as having Lin-Manuel Miranda to play Hamilton. Whiteness is not tied down to Spider-Man's character or his ever-evolving mythology. Neither is James Bond's. <sighs> this entire article reads, I hate white people. We should change them to not be white because I am triggered by them. I know what you're thinking. Why aren't I Pakistani or some stone dreadlock Jamaican while well, you're all being racists? Do you know what's even more baffling? Hamilton Casting Call wants women to play Washington and Burr. Principals always look like lesbians. This screams, revise history because I hate white people and I hate men. Am I the only one who feels disrespected right now? Like, it's an American culture, being just utterly demolished by these numbnuts. At this moment, the Hamilton play has been turned into a Rule 63 fanfiction RP that would have been better off written at Tumblr. There's a reason why I don't use the term SJW, I just use Tumblrites, because that's where they belong. And that's just the tip of the penis for how things will get if we let that become law. 
I may manipulate you to serve my agenda, but at least I'm rational about where our society is headed. Here's also an interesting discovery. Mike Pence is tweeted beyond than just that clip. At another point of the show, King George III sings, When your people say they hate you, don't come crawling back at me, and blew a raspberry at Pence, causing more applause. And you're all here wondering why Trump and Pence are butthurt. To clarify, they're being provoked first. It's like a game developer telling us, hey, don't be racist to black people, even though we already aren't racist to black people. It's frustrating to have someone tell you the one thing that you're already doing because they think that you haven't done it. Your so-called club activities are nothing more than debasing macho fantasies. I promise you, we will bring you guys down. All hail Super Club! This is just one of the many consequences of the media brainwashing people into thinking that Trump and Pence are literally Hitler and they fear for their lives. Dear mainstream media, fuck you. Sincerely, a person of color. That's all for the video today. If you like this, you can go ahead and click the like button and subscribe for more if you wish. You can support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching.